All right, in section 1.5, we'll be talking about the triple scalar product. The goal of this section is to be able to determine algebraically whether three given vectors, u, v, and w in R3, all lie on the same plane or not. So here is my plane. I have three vectors that are parallel to it. Um, one thing to note here, um, those vectors don't lie anywhere, that's what we've been saying. So we could move the green vector up or down, but all I want is that one representative of each of the vectors. So there's a way of placing each of the vectors so that they all are in the plane. Or if you want, I want all three vectors to be parallel to that plane. All right, so let's define the triple scalar product. If I have these three vectors here, u, v, and w in R3, only works in R3, the triple scalar product will be u dot v cross w. And notice that I'm going to start with the cross product. I'm going to get a vector. I'm going to take a dot product. And so this is in R since dot products give us numbers. All right, so the triple scalar product will give us a number for any triple of vectors. All right, so let's try computing some of them. Um, in example 1.5.1, I'm given vectors u, v, and w, and I want to compute two different triple scalar product. I want u dot with v cross w, and I want w dotted with v cross u. Excellent, let's start with u dotted with v cross w. The parentheses tell me to start by looking at v cross w. So let's compute that separately. Um, v is 3 minus 1, 1. w is minus 2, 0, 3. Um, let's compute the cross product the usual way. minus 3 minus 0 minus 2 minus 9 I get minus 11 0 minus 2 so I got minus 3 minus 11 minus 2 and hopefully so did you so here I'm going to take the dot product of u with the cross product I just computed And I got minus 3, minus 55, minus 4. I'm getting 59, 62, so minus 62. All right, so that's the first one. Let's try the second one. The second one, I have the same vector, but if you look carefully, I've switched u and w. v is still in the second position, but I've switched u, w and u. As sadly, that means the cross product I just computed is useless here. So I will recompute a new cross product. Um, u was 1, 5, 2. So this is the cross product I need. Again, if you need more practice doing cross product, please pause the video and try it yourself. All right, minus 2, minus 5, I get minus 7. Um, 1, minus 6, I get minus 5. And 15, minus, minus 1, so that's 16. And so now I'm going to take a dot product between w, which was this vector, minus 2, 0, 3. Minus 7, minus 5, 16. And I'll get 14 plus 0, plus uh, 48, that's 50, 62. Okay, 62. And now there's a last question here that says, what do you notice? Do we notice anything? Ah, I notice something. First thing I notice, they're not equal. It'll get exactly the same thing. Second thing I notice is they're close. They're just opposites. So it looks to me like when I switch
uh, sorry, oh, I can turn this into a W. When I switched um, W and U, it looked like it got a minus, and I'm guessing that that's a rule we'll learn. Let's see, take away property of the triple scalar product. When we switch, ooh, any two vectors, so not just U and W, any two, we flip the sign. And so if I start with U, V, W, and I switch U and V, I get a minus. And then from here, I switched the interior two, and I got another minus, which canceled with the first. And so you can see any time I switch two, I should get a minus.